Okay, today we're gonna to show you how to set up an Evolution RO1000. I went ahead and unpacked the box and all the contents are laying out on this cart right here in front of us. So the couple things you want to remember when installing this is install it near a drain. All RO systems have wastewater, so you're going to need to be near a drain. And also, the feed valve that comes with this system is a garden hose connector. So you want it installed near a hose bib, or you want to be able to run a hose to the system. Now there are other feed valves available sold separately if you're not able to use a hose bib. So, the first thing that we want to do is use the little lube kit packets that came in your system, they're located in this fittings bag right here. We want to use one of these lube packets and lube up all the O-rings on the housings as well as the stems of the two membranes. Okay, step two is to install your carbon filter. Now if you'll notice there's a grommet on either side of the carbon filter so it doesn't matter which way it goes in. The one thing you want to be aware of is if you look at this manifold right here, the two holes on your bottom have female ports in them. Those are for the stems of the membranes. So that's where your membranes go. And your carbon filter goes in this top port right here. So the grommet balances on that plastic ring right there. And once you crank the housing down, it'll hold it in place, no problem. So. You can turn it the most, most of the way with your hand. And then when it starts to get tight, you have your three ring support leg. Now if you'll notice, the top ring in the support leg has little grooves in it. Those act as a wrench for your housings. They match up with the grooves on these housings right here. So just turn it clockwise, about a quarter of a turn. Just tighten it up a little bit. The lip of this housing does not have to be flush with the manifold. There can be about a quarter centimeter gap right there. It's not gonna leak and it'll make it a lot easier to change your filters in the future. Now, do the same with the two membranes. The stem on the membrane right here pops right into this little hole in the manifold. You'll feel it pop in. Again, you can tighten it most of the way with your hand and then give it a little crank with the wrench. Okay. All right, so the next thing you want to do is install the elbows in these ports right here. So the elbows are in this fitting bag. And as you'll notice these elbows also have an O-ring on them. Those need lube as well. So take that silicone lube that comes in that bag and lube up each of these O-rings. Now, once you've applied lube to all the O-rings on these elbows, it's time to install them in your manifold. So this top port right here is your feed elbow. The feed elbow is white and it has a half inch incoming. So that pops in this top port right here. The second port is for the drain line. The green elbow is your drain elbow. Now, you'll notice your system also comes with this orange elbow. That is also a drain elbow. The differences are this is a two to one and this is a one to one, meaning two parts waste to one part RO water or one part waste to one part RO water. Now, obviously with the orange, you're gonna save water, but it's a little harder on your membranes when you're restricting the wastewater like that. We usually tell people a good rule of thumb, if your PPMs of your incoming source water are above 350, maybe to go ahead and use this green elbow and use the orange one at your own risk. If you're below 350, you could probably use the orange elbow, save a little bit of water, not see that big of a dip in membrane life. Again, it just depends on the quality of your water. 
Now the bottom elbow is your RO water. It's blue, so this is where your blue tubing is going to go. It's where your good water is going to come out. And if you'll notice, all these elbows have shapes on them that correspond with the shapes on the ports of your manifold. This top elbow has the arrow, which corresponds with the arrow. The wastewater has a triangle, which corresponds with a triangle. And then the purified elbow has a square, which corresponds with a square. So the next thing you want to do is take your lock bar and clip in all three of these elbows into the manifold to hold them in place. Next step is to install your pressure gauge. Now this reverse osmosis system is going to give you the best flow rate right around 70-75 psi. If you have really low pressure, you may have to end up getting a booster pump. But with this gauge, you'll be able to monitor what your incoming pressure is. So there's a little length of half inch white tubing that comes in that bag. That goes into the elbow first. Then you install your pressure gauge. Next thing you want to do is take this three ring support leg and go ahead and slide it over these housings. See it acts as a stand as well as a wrench. Now you're ready to install your inlet tubing. So first thing you do, once you've installed your pressure gauge, is install the half inch white PEX tubing right into this pressure gauge right here. Then you have your 3 8 black waistline as well as your 3 8 blue product water line. So install that waistline next and make sure you're near a drain so you can put the other end down a drain. And then last but not least, you have your 3 8 blue product tubing. That's where your good water is going to come out. So then, you want to install your inline shutoff valve somewhere on this blue tubing. That way you can turn the source water onto your system and just leave it on. Turn your water on and off with this valve whenever you need RO water. Now, a lot of you are going to be using a 3 8 float valve to fill up your tanks, in which you may not need this inline shutoff valve. I like to go ahead and install it anyways. It's good to have just in case an emergency. And that's it. Now you're ready to use your Evolution RO1000. Connect the half inch line to your feed valve, which in this case is a half inch garden hose connector. And this goes into a hose bib or into a garden hose. And you're ready to turn your water on and use your Evolution 1000. Now these membranes have a food grade preservative stored inside of them, so you're going to want to run it for about 45 minutes or an hour down the drain to rinse out that food grade preservative. And then you're ready to use your RO1000.